Hey, good morning, everyone. It's uh, 0535 on Wednesday morning. I'm on my way to the uh, uh, storage to do a brew. I am going to do Edwards House Pale Ale. Uh, what do they call it? Bee Cave. Uh, Edward is from Bee Cave, Texas. It's the name Bee Cave Beer or whatever. But uh, got up around 5 this morning, made some coffee, got my stuff ready, and uh, out the door. And uh, yeah, that's it. On my way, early AM, 0535. All right, talk to y'all soon. Later, Gator. <clears throat> hey, good morning. All right, it's uh, 0630 in the morning, and uh, I'm just heating up the water. You see here, uh, the uh, PID, don't know what that stands for, but uh whatever but it's uh set here at the bottom temperature 66.7 that's the temperature i'm trying to reach in order to uh mash the grain soak the grain right now it's at 59 so the water's basically i filled this up with hot water it's coming out the back side coming down around into the uh um the, the, the boil kettle which is down here <clears throat> it's coming down into the boil kettle and then coming back out through here into the pump and then out and up into the rims tube which is here there's the the heaters in here the uh measuring the the temperature gauge is over here comes out and back up into here and it just completes the cycle and uh and then uh this is monitoring the Right now the temperature is 59.7. The water, it's sent, set to 66.7. So it will continue to circulate. When it's uh, flat right now, the heater's on. <clears throat> this is the wa hot water heater's right in here. And right now it's on. And uh, so it's heating up the water. It'll start to flicker when it gets close to 66.7, uh, indicating that it's uh, on and off, trying to reach the ultimate temperature of 66.7, so. That's where we're at right now. This one, I need to reconnect it for my other rims tube, which is right there. Just in case that one breaks down, I got a backup ready to rock and roll. All right, y'all. So that is what's going on right now. And I uh, just uh, <clears throat> about ready to, to, uh, to grain, uh, Cut my grain, or what do you call it? Don't even know. Mill my grain um, in my grain mill. I'll show you that when I'm ready to set up later. Okay, so when I go buy my grain, getting a big bag like this, it's already uh, pre measured the weights, um, all, the special, all the specialty grains. Um, at the, uh, I get it at the brew shop and <clears throat> then I bring it, bring it home. You could, uh, if I chose, I could, uh, have him grind the mill, uh, mill the grain over there. However, this way I can get a specific, uh, cut that I want. And you can see here, I'm not sure if you can see it, but. The grain is basically whole. So I'm gonna put it in my grain mill, which is, uh, so see, has some rollers.
little dusty. I'm sure you don't want to see me finish this, but I'll talk to you in a little bit. Okay, so I'm almost done grinding the grain, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to prep. This uh, The system I got here is called Brew in a Bag. B-I-A-B. -B. So basically, I put the grain in the bag, and then put it in the brew kettle and let it soak. So what I'm doing now is I'm just prepping. What I'm gonna, uh, as soon as I'm done grinding the grain milling the grain then i'll just pour it in here and uh, uh you can see the water's almost heated up and uh then, then we'll throw it in Right now, uh, the temperature I was trying to reach is 66.7. You can see now it's flashing, and that's just indicating the uh, the heating elements in the rims tube is uh, just turning on and off every time it turns on just to maintain the temperature. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and I got my grain in the bag, and I'm going to throw it in there and let it soak. I'll connect it to this bugger. I'll recirculate the mash with this. It will just spray water. Hot water on the uh, in the bag while it's uh, soaking. All right, later. All right, what I'm doing now is I'm I'm heating up the uh, sparge sparge water to 79.4 degrees Celsius. Oh. Right now it's at 65, and what that is for is to after the grain is done soaking, um, then I want to rinse the grain with the hot water just to get all the remaining sugars out of the uh the grain so and as soon as that is heated up i'll close the lid uh that will be done it will be waiting in the uh, reserves then i'll connect this system here um to the pump and what will happen is it will just bring the sugar water out into the pump and down into here and then it will with this little device it will spray the grain it will it's called a recirculating mash Right now, the grain is in here, and it's uh, soaking, just like a big tea bag. So, all right, talk to you all soon, later. Hey, sorry, I forgot. Uh, this here is what the the hops, the, the hops come in. It's basically, yeah, you know what it is. This one here is Amarillo and Cascade. This recipe calls for Cascade. So what I do is I just put, uh, basically if this is empty, I'll, I'll throw the empty uh, bowl on there and uh, measure it out. This one came out to 0.65 ounces. And so it has a, a time schedule here. Uh, you can see here, the first one is two ounces. I put it in as soon as the boil starts, the boil is for 60 minutes. And the next one here is I will add that when the boil is halfway done at 30 minutes and then this one here 15 5 and then the last one is that when i turn the flame off it's called flame out so this is basically the schedule here two ounces one ounce you can see 60 30 five, 15 5 and then zero i had some extra hops left over so i'm going to add them at the flame out and it will give a lot more flavor that's what this is a uh, bittering and then it adds uh, le more flavor as it goes down. And then this is the most flavor at flame out. So that's how you do it. Oh, sorry. Okay, so it's done. I'm gonna um, drain it into a bucket and then recirculate the uh, sparge for 20 minutes, something like that. All right. Okay, uh, sorry for the clattering of the uh, 
garage door, but it's windy outside. And I'm glad I'm indoors. But basically, we take the broom in the bag, which was straight uh, draped over the uh, roof kettle while it was mashing in. We hook it up on the pulley system. Uh, it's a little heavy, so that's why we do the pulley system. And then what we're gonna do is drain the drain the grain. Just slowly lift it out. And I have this here to, uh, this is my sparge arm. I will use that to put the hot water over it. So, like that. Just like that. <clears throat> we'll let it drain for a while. Then I'll run this over. I'm thinking about maybe uh, draining the warts or the sugar water for you non brewers. Uh, uh, drain it into a bucket. And then uh, maybe recirculating the sparge water. To rinse the grain and, and try to get a little bit higher efficiency, but we will see. And what I do here is uh, take, it, take these buggers, I'm going to rinse them off in a second. Uh, take this here, uh, which is just a uh, another rack, uh, and uh, I've been using this for. I'll put the rack shelving over the brew kettle and then I will squeeze the bag to get all the remaining um, sugar water out of the bag. So I wiped this, I sprayed this off yesterday. So right now I'm just getting a, if there's any dust from last night. Just take it off. Okay. Alrighty. And then I do this. Pull this bad boy up. You could actually just let it drain up, but drain. I'm not sure if I already told you that, but <clears throat> quick ways to squeeze it. And we'll release it here. Icelanders. Okay. Rinse off the gloves. Rinse this bugger out here. And start draining. I'll just talk to you guys in a little bit. Okay, so <clears throat> rinsed off the gloves. Now we just uh, squeeze it.
You guys get the idea. I'm gonna turn you off and I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so what I decided to do was uh, go ahead and uh, start the, uh, the first runnings on the boil kettle. And the second runnings, what, I'm gonna, what I did was I added three and a half gallons of hot water, uh, sparge water to the...